Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today's topic is the electromagnetic spectrum. Objectives for today will be recognizing characteristics of electromagnetic waves and determining the type of electromagnetic wave based on its characteristics. Electromagnetic waves are waves that do not require a medium in which to travel. They can travel through a vacuum. Electromagnetic or EM waves have an electric field component and they have a magnetic field component. And the electric field is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And both of those are perpendicular to the direction of the wave's velocity. If you look at the diagram below, if the wave is traveling here to the right, the direction of its velocity, the electric field is perpendicular to that, and the magnetic field is also perpendicular to that. Now, electromagnetic waves are caused by vibrating charges. But just like other waves, they have a wavelength, they have a frequency, and they have a wave speed. And the speed of an electromagnetic wave in a vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, or lowercase c, the symbol for that, because we use it so often. The fastest known speed in the universe. When you get to higher frequencies of electromagnetic waves, you must have smaller wavelengths because of our relationship V equals F lambda. If velocity is constant, as frequency goes up, wavelength must go down and vice versa. So this is an inverse relationship. The frequency of an electromagnetic wave determines its characteristics. Typically higher frequencies have more energy, lower frequencies have less energy. So an electromagnetic wave that has a high frequency, something like an X-ray, typically carries much more energy than an electromagnetic wave that has a low frequency, something like a radio wave. We can use the electromagnetic spectrum to help us better understand what all types of electromagnetic waves there are in our universe. And this is just a diagram that shows you a range of wavelengths and frequencies for all the different types of electromagnetic waves. Wavelength increases to the right across the top, and frequency increases to the left across the bottom. So the left-hand side has the highest frequencies, and therefore the highest energy waves. The right-hand side, with the lower frequencies, has the lower energy waves. If you were going to be hit by an electromagnetic wave, would you prefer it to be a gamma ray or a radio wave? Well, personally, I would prefer to be hit by a radio wave. It has the lower energy because it has a lower frequency. Types of waves you can see at the left-hand side, the highest energy, high frequency waves that have the smallest wavelength are gamma rays. Then we get into x-rays, ultraviolet, and then we have this little bit of the spectrum that we know as visible light which runs from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, just like the colors of the rainbow. Over here on the right, at the red side, we can see a frequency of 3.84 times 10 to the 14th hertz. This corresponds to a wavelength of about 4, pardon me, 700 nanometers. On the left-hand side, over here at violet, that corresponds to a wavelength of about 400 nanometers. So wavelengths of visible light are 400 to 700 nanometers, or 4 times 10 to the minus 7 meters to 7 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Then we get into infrared waves, microwaves, and radio waves. Many different types of waves in the electromagnetic spectrum. Let's see if we can't use this knowledge to solve a couple of basic problems. Number one, what color of light has a wavelength of 5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters in air? Well, that's going to be 500 nanometers. So if I look on my electromagnetic spectrum, I could look it up in terms of wavelength. But our electromagnetic spectrum, the one we looked at on the previous slide, shows the light in terms of frequency. So for practice, let's convert that to frequency. If V equals F lambda, frequency then must be the velocity over the wavelength, or 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, over 5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, which will come out to be about 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz is our frequency. If we look that up on the electromagnetic spectrum, 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz falls right in here on the green. Therefore, our answer must be green because our frequency was 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz, number 2. 
A television remote control is used to direct pulses of EM radiation to a receiver on a television. This communication from the remote control to the television illustrates that the electromagnetic radiation is a longitudinal wave, possesses energy inversely proportional to its frequency, diffracts and accelerates in air, or four, transfers energy without transferring mass. Well, of course, the answer has to be four. Waves transfer energy without transferring mass. Sample problem three. A microwave and an x-ray are traveling in a vacuum. Compared to the wavelength and period of the microwave, it has a wavelength that is longer or shorter, and a period that is longer or shorter. Well, we know that the wavelength of the x-ray must be shorter because it has more energy. Shorter wavelengths, if we remember V equals F lambda, shorter wavelengths mean higher frequencies, and frequency is directly proportional to energy. X-rays are more energetic than microwaves. Now, as far as the period, remember period is 1 over frequency. So the bigger frequency we have, the smaller period. Therefore, compared to a microwave, an X-ray has a wavelength that is shorter and a period that is shorter. Correct answer must be number 4. A 1.5 micron, or 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meter long segment of an electromagnetic wave having a frequency of 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz is represented below. Mark two points on the wave that are in phase with each other. Well, if you remember, points that are in phase are the same point on subsequent waves. So an easy one, why don't we pick a point over here and maybe a point over here on the next wave. Those two points we will label with a P, and they are in phase with each other. Now for part B, it says, according to the electromagnetic spectrum, which type of electromagnetic wave does the segment in the diagram represent? And just like we did before, we can look at the frequency or the wavelength up here, look that up on our electromagnetic spectrum, and find that 6 times 10 to the 14th hertz corresponds to green light. Great. Let's try one more. What is the period of a 60 hertz electromagnetic wave traveling at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second? Well, if we're given the frequency, period is just 1 over frequency, or 1 over 60 hertz, which will be 0 0.017 seconds. Hopefully this gives you a nice introduction to the electromagnetic spectrum. If you need more help or are looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, and make it a great day.